Hi, Danielle the Clay Lady here on the Clay Ladies campus in Nashville, Tennessee. We're on the fifth video of our series, How to Throw on the Potter's Wheel, One Step at a Time. So we're talking about shaping. When you think about shaping on your pot, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. One is you can't defy the law of gravity. If you see a pot that's been made that has a very narrow bottom and a really wide top, it was not thrown that way. Um, what happens is it got trimmed to be that shape. When they threw the pot, they may have made the inside pot the right shape, but the outside pot had a lot of clay on the outside to help scaffold it, to help support it. And then when it was leather hard, they could turn it over, trim the excess, so it could look like it defied the law of gravity. Real uh, sharp angles, same thing, happens in the leather hard stage. The other thing to keep in mind is that shaping is a lot like the arches of a bridge. So when you think about pottery and how beautiful it is, you also think about how beautiful bridge are and that so that they have a beginning and an end but usually those match and even the inside of a neck it'll be an inverted bridge so think about the arches of a bridge when you're thinking about shaping on your pot so there are two techniques for shaping one is collaring pots have body parts that has a floor it has a belly a shoulder a neck and a mouth and so we call it collaring because you use just the pressure points on a line and you can collar where the neck would be. That's collaring. Now you don't want to use, just like we talked about in pulling up, you don't want to use your whole hand to squeeze a pot because what happens is this part of your pot's traveling in a different velocity and force than this and if you put equal pressure on it you'll get unequal reaction and your pot will start wobbling like the hula. Now I'm going to get my hands a little wet because you can collar not just the neck but if I wanted to narrow the whole pot I could slowly move up like this and so I can create a narrower cylinder but I don't do with my whole hands I just do parts of it. The other technique other than collaring is shaping and, uh, that I call the dance. Now when you're shaping there's a lot of different techniques but I call it the dance because we have this androgynous couple here and not one is leading all the time. If I need my pot to swell out my inside hand's going to lead, my outside hand's going to support and follow. If I want it to go in my outside hand's going to lead, my inside hand's going to support and follow. So it's just this nice dance between the two hands to create shape. I'm going to do a little bit of an exaggerated shape so you can uh, see what I'm talking about. My pot's kind of tall so I'm going to do that salute technique again. I'm going to go in my pot with my fingertips and my out outside hand and I'm going to not defy the law of gravity by trying to make a belly happen too soon. I'm going to wait until I get up into an area where I can have a belly, create a shoulder, follow into that neck, and then pull out the mouth. So that was a bit of an exaggeration as far as how quickly you can go. Just like pulling up takes three to six times to get the walls even, shaping is the same way. Go ahead and take your time. It doesn't have to happen all at once. So I'm going to go in and refine this a little bit more, a little bit less of an exaggeration. My hand's getting dry on the inside, so I'm going to not just wet my fingertips, but my whole hand because this part is actually on the wall of the pot as I'm using my fingertips on the inside and I can pull this out. Now when you're thinking about shapes and you're not quite sure what shape to make, think about your family. You know, do you have an uncle that's kind of tall and skinny? Do you have an aunt that's shaped a little bit like an apple? Do you have a teenager that has a little bit of a wide mouth? Think about different people and that will also help you change your shape a little bit. Um, if you have a, a wall that's still thick enough and you decide that maybe you've shaped that too far, you can collar back in. So you can alternate dancing and the collar. When um, you've got a wall, a corner here, and you're not quite sure, your hands are a little wobbly, you can't get it quite right, you can also use a rib for shaping. This is a metal rib, and I can't just push it against the whole wall for the same reason I can't grab my pot with my whole hands. What I'm going to do is hold it just a little bit away from the wall and then my inside fingertips are going to go up the shape of the rib. A metal or a rubber rib are really awesome because you just use your fingers and you have this perfect arch. So I'm going to make sure that it's wet so my clay hydroplanes and then I'm going to start at the bottom and slowly move up. So there's not pressure on the whole pot from the rib, only where my finger is touching the rib. 
that really helps refine some of that belly. You can also use different shaped ribs. Um, there's a lot of different ribs out there. If I wanted to use this wooden rib to create just the right uh, neck on this if I wanted to, or they even have ribs, like this one has a little bit of a design, we can do this on there. So you'll see a lot of people that'll do rib shaping and that they hold the rib next to the wall and then slowly with their finger move around that rim. So shaping is a fun part of uh, working on the potter's wheel and I think this covers the different techniques on shaping, but do know that the way that you get better at shaping is to maybe work in a series where you make five or six of the same shape over and over. And you, it's very hard for an artist's hands to make the same thing over and over again and have them all match. What you do is you make one and then you make the next five copying that one. You can use a ruler, you can use a tool to make sure that you're having the right dimensions. But shaping is, can be as simple as a dance up the side and also with collaring. But remember, you can't defy the law of gravity. You have to work within this soft pot with gravity pulling on top of it, but the arches of a bridge will create the strength to help hold up against that push of gravity. So we have one more uh, step, on, and that is to get our pot off the wheel. Have you found sometimes that you make the perfect pot, but then as soon as it's time to get it off the wheel, it warps or messes up? I've got some tricks for that and some fixes for that. So be sure and look for our next video, the final look and off the wheel. If you want more information, be sure and check out the claylady.com. There's all kinds of information about our campus, Clay Lady products, my new book for potters, the Clay Lady's lesson book. And you can also sign up for our newsletter to know what's going on at the campus. And, um, Thank you so much for the teaching opportunity and try to be an artist in everything you do. I will see you at the next and last video of our series, The Final Look and Off the Wheel.